The second paragraph of uh, the Declaration is one of the most amazing set of phrases ever written. It is the creed of what makes America and now what makes the aspirations of many people around the world. Let's just read that first sentence which, of the second paragraph, which is just uh, awesome. It's, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let's start even with the word we. Who's we? We, it says, is the, uh, uh, the American colonies now uh, gathering as the United States of America, but they're basically white males. Everybody at that convention is a white male, most of them landowners. So what the arc of American history shows is that word we begins over the course of decades and then centuries to include more and more people. Eventually it includes freed slaves, eventually it includes women, but that's the narrative of American history, is who are we that have these truths as self-evident, that we're all equal? Now, it's also interesting, the phrase uh, self-evident. Mm -hmm. You know, this is uh, something that comes from the uh, rationality of the scientific era we were in. This is an age right after Isaac Newton has made everything in the universe rational through scientific laws. And it also comes from some of the philosophers, especially David Hume, that there are just certain things that are self-evident. So that's an important concept, that they're not appealing to anybody else to say, you know, what are these truths? They're saying, this is just our rationality tells us this is true. But then they say, all men are created equal. Yeah. Now, they say men. Back then, men was supposed to be a phrase that was more inclusive than just males. Or man. All of right. Men. It's like mankind to some mm. extent. But then again, you know, at least Jefferson, he owned slaves. Yeah. And uh, women, they weren't necessarily given the right to vote. So even though they mean men sort of like mankind, they also really generally mean men at this point. And once again, this is where the American narrative starts. And fortunately, that phrase gets expanded over time as to what they mean. Right, right. Uh, look at the phrase created equal. What does that really mean? Well, first of all, it doesn't mean that people are always equal. At a certain point in life, Jefferson owns a whole lot of property, and Franklin is quite rich as a printer, and different people have different statuses in life. But they're saying that in a fundamental political way, we all start off with created equal. We have certain rights that you just can't take away from us, whether we're rich or poor or whatever. Those unalienable rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And was, I'm guessing it's also a ding at the king because right. royalty kind of one underlying assumption is that it's inherited and that right. you, you are created better off. Right. And Thomas Paine, who is a pamphleteer, has just written uh, has just written this document, Common Sense, mm. and that's helped inspire everybody. And at the heart of the document, Common Sense, is that there's no divine right of kings. Divine right of kings was a British concept, which meant God made certain people more equal or better than others. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. And the king was, you know, by divine right, had these powers. And we're saying, no, the kings don't have any more powers. Ben Franklin was very much of that way, which is he hated the notion of aristocracy, mm -hmm. that some people were born noble and some people were born aristocratic and some people were born royal and whatever. But think about it for a moment. What was Thomas Jefferson thinking? The guy who owns a lot of slaves. What was he thinking when he writes this amazing phrase, all men are created equal? You know, I think he was very conflicted. I mean, yeah. here's a guy who did not end up even freeing most of his slaves, you know, in his lifetime. And yet he could write these inspiring words. And if you read about Jefferson, you know that was the fundamental conflict. And it's a conflict that we as a nation have been wrestling with. Yeah. And, and, and 
as a, as a slave owner, he but he also knew them very well. He knew them as as human beings, perhaps. Right. Well, he had uh, he fathered children exactly. with one of the slaves. Mm-hmm. Ben Franklin is interesting because early on in life, he had two household slaves Mm -hmm. who he didn't really treat as slaves, but they were his household servants. And he had allowed the advertising of slavery in the Pennsylvania Gazette, Mm -hmm. the newspaper uh, that he published. But he realized, after he writes these words, created equal, he realizes how abhorrent that is to his own notions that people are created equal. And of course, he's by then freed as slaves, but he becomes the president of the Society for the Abolition of Slavery mm. in Pennsylvania as a way of trying to make up for the fact that he had erred. He had, uh, he had been wrong when he was young to tolerate the institution of slavery, and he becomes an abolitionist. Of course, John Adams, from the very beginning, was mm. an abolitionist. And this is important for people to realize. You know, When you take a kind of American history class, it seems like obviously everything comes to a head right leading up to the Civil War, uh, but this, this was already starting to become an issue, a moral issue, a philosophical issue, even at the, at the founding of the country. And a political issue as well, because if you want Jefferson and you want Virginia in, mm-hmm. you know, the reason John Adams, he was a great abolitionist, but there were no plantations. There was no cotton being right. grown in Massachusetts. But if you were a cotton farmer or, uh, you know, a plantation owner in Virginia, you tended to own slaves. And it becomes a great political issue where the slave-holding states have to be brought into this union. We see that conflict at the Con- when the Constitution is written, uh, you know, uh, a dec- you know, 11 years later. Uh, they're still having this conflict on what do we do about slavery? Yeah, and it will continue for another 70-something years. Yeah, if you want to say that it was totally resolved by the Civil War, <laughs> and not, there will yeah. be some who will say that that was the original stain on this unbelievably beautiful phrase, which is that all men are created equal. Yeah, very cool.